Hi, this is Farouk from Direct Hub and I want to do a quick video showing the first steps you need to take before studying for the FE exam. So we'll dive right into it. The first thing you need to do is go on the NCS website and register for the exam, right? So make an account and register. Pick a specific date. Some students need three months. Some students need one month. If you're if you recently graduated, you might be able to do it and just study one month. And some students need six months. A lot a lot of students actually need six months. So it just depends on when you want to schedule it and it's all up to you and how comfortable you feel as you practice the questions for the FE exam. So based on that, before we practice questions and begin studying, what you need to do is register. So you should have a dashboard. So this is how my dashboard looks. And on the dashboard, what we need that's going to be essential is going to be under useful documents. So we go to common tasks, go under useful documents and go to view reference handbooks. And what you have to do here is download the new FE reference handbook. I see a lot of students with the old reference handbooks for the FE do not use those. So do not use the 9.5 if you're scheduled in July after July 2020 make sure you use the new FE handbook 10.0.1 if you're taking it this month in June you can use this handbook FE handbook 9.5 but I'm assuming a lot of you are taken after July so we're gonna download this handbook so this handbook will contain all of the equations you need and you can do control F on your exam it's the only reference you are allowed to have on the exam so that's gonna be very essential other than that we can go back to the dashboard again and you can go under exams then obviously you want to register for the exam and this purchase a practice exam is also gonna be helpful notice here how this says let's say I'm doing the civil FE exam it says where's the civil FE civil practice exam so this practice book is only effective until June 30th. So you can go all the way down here and buy the latest one, which is effective beginning July 2020. I believe they changed the questions. So this is the practice book that you want to buy. It's around $30 and you should get it in around, I believe, five business days using their shipping. So this book is it's a practice exam that's going to be very helpful it's around 100 questions and it's very similar to what you will see on the actual FE exam so this is for the FE practice civil exam there's also chemical electrical environmental mechanical industrial systems and other disciplines I do not recommend that you buy the reference handbook as a hard copy unless you really want to because on the exam you will need to use a PDF so get used to knowing the PDF and scrolling through that and using control F to find any relevant sections for specific practice questions or when you do a practice test so get used to the PDF which we downloaded initially for free that's the reference PDF you want to use so other than that I want to focus on looking through the PDF so if I open it here this is the new FE handbook 10.0.1 and you'll have all the sections here for math and so on quadratic equation logarithms chemistry so statics dynamics mechanics of materials thermal fluids heat transfer then so these are typically for the morning section these are the topics for the morning section then you can get into the specific subjects so if you're doing chemical the chemical exam this is the section for you for civil which is what I did this has all the topics it has the geotechnical equations phase relationships you have everything else in this if you keep going down so you'll have structural and so on you'll have water resources down here here's our water resource resources section environmental same steps these are the relevant equations for your section so also we know there's gonna be an index down here 
and below that in the same reference handbook is going to be the FE exam specifications so let's say we're looking at the civil click on the civil and it gives you the topic mathematics and statistics it tells you there's going to be around 8 to 12 questions and it gives you the subtopics these are the subtopics that you should focus on make sure you go through all of these so you have analytic geometry single variable calculus vector operations and statistics notice here I believe they took out the they changed it a bit from the other specifications so this is for ethics engineering economics statics dynamics mechanics and materials so make sure you look at these subtopics and notice how like the water resources is going to be a big section it's around 10 to 15 questions so that's going to be a section you need to know so for civil that's a big section and also what's also important is the structural this has the same weight the geotechnical 10 to 15 questions transportation around 9 to 14 construction around 8 to 12 so what's crucial here is you look at these subtopics and study these so just get familiar with the concepts and, and do as many examples as you can. So for pumps, know the pump equation, know where to find it in the handbook, and so on. So that's that for the civil. You can do the same for the, if we go back to the index, so the specification table of contents. Let's say I'm looking at the mechanical. You do the same thing. The math, these are the subtopics, right? So for the math, we have numerical methods. Then you have algorithm and logic development that you have to know. So you'll get around six to nine questions. Then you can go down and look at the rest. Notice how dynamics is going to be a big section here. And it includes vibrations as well. So it's 10 to 15 questions. And we have to know all of these subtopics. Make sure you review these. Watch a video. Do practice questions. Read. Whatever you got to do. Just go through it. Then this is also a big section down here mechanical design and analysis thermodynamics is going to be a big section 10 to 15 questions and so is fluid mechanics around 10 to 15 questions on the FE exam so that's for the mechanical and then you can go back to the table of contents so mechanical is the last one no, the other disciplines let's say we're doing that same procedure the sections and the topics and what's big for this section is going to be down here so you have to know thermodynamics and heat transfer 9 to 14 questions then you have fluid mechanics is going to be the biggest section for other disciplines so you have to know this very well and these are all the subtopics you have to understand and be prepared to answer so that's that strength of materials as well is going to be a big section so is dynamics and so is statics these are all weighted the same so that's that and you get the point here go through the specifications read through them and look at them and try to understand every topic and to help you study for the FE exam and check off these subtopics so the all of these subtopics that you have to understand and practice there's an Excel sheet that you can use if you choose to and what's happening here this tab is just for information so what's happening is we have the section and we have the topics that we need to understand and here there's an estimated number of questions why I chose this eight because if we go back to the handbook the FE reference handbook it says there's gonna be eight to twelve questions but based on the diagnostic charts I get from students I notice the NCS provides the number they only grade the number on the lower range so you're gonna be graded to about eight questions eight questions will be graded so your exam is gonna be 110 questions but they only grade a hundred of the questions I think they use the other 10 to see how students do on those specific questions so based on the diagnostic charts students get eight of the questions will be on the will be graded on the FE exam but the range is 8 to 12 so for this the ethics you're gonna get around four questions that are actually graded 
for the engineering econs around five questions. So what this means, based on the chart I made, you're gonna get around eight, you're gonna get around four. So if we, if we go down for the water resources, we're gonna get around 10 questions. So that makes up 10% of our exam. This is what's shown in the chart here, in the pie chart. So let's say we're looking at water resources and environmental engineering. It's gonna be around 10% of our exam. Structural engineering will be around 10%. So you should put in a lot of time in these sections. You should study these sections wisely and spend as much time as you can on these sections. Geotechnical, 10%. So if we look ethics, it's kind of easy if you read the handbook and just be familiar with the handbook before going into the exam for the ethics. Instead of when you're in the exam, you might just sit there, go back to the handbook and read that takes a lot of time so for the ethics I recommend you read that section in the handbook before taking the exam just be very familiar familiar with that so that's that it's around four percent of the exam surveying is around six percent fluid is six percent so dynamics is very low it's around four percent so you don't want to spend a lot of time with respect to maybe structural engineering on dynamics right so you want to spend most of your time on these big topics, transportation, construction, math, and so on. So this is just a breakdown of the expected percentage of questions. So at the end of the day, all of these add up to 100% to a total number of 100 questions that you will be graded on. So that's this page, that's this tab, then you move on to the next tab. And it shows just for to help you out if you choose to use it a section and the topics and once you do these topics go down and keep checking them off keep checking them off check off what you covered and what you studied but let's say we're on for example um, I'll do let's say yeah, it's the same procedure here. You just have to check off each subtopic. Let's say we're on water resources. You're studying pumps, right? You check it off. Then on this column, if you choose to do this, so it says topic studied. So what does that mean? For pumps, you might put that you studied the pump power. You studied how to relate pumps to, let's say, Bernoulli equation how that applies in the Bernoulli equation and so on so you just put the subtopics for pumps and water distribution you check it off and you put the specific topics that you studied for water distribution or you can put the number of questions that you did for water distribution in this tab so you can edit these tabs if you choose to these columns sorry you can edit those if you choose to so that's just that this is mainly a checkoff list for the topics if you choose to do it if you use it this is just to help you study and check off all of the topics do not miss any topic specifically for these big sections right water structural geotechnical transportation and so on study time is just the amount of study time you're gonna put in for each section so you might change that to hours or however you want to study Topics to review, this is important, so write down your weaknesses. Let's say you're struggling with, if we go down to statics here, let me go to statics, you're doing, what's somewhat difficult, equilibrium, let's say static friction, and you're just struggling understanding the concept and certain questions, put that here as a topic to review and be very specific about why you struggled with that topic so you can review that the notes to itself you can change this or just put any notes you want for yourself as you study for the FE exam so that's that this is for the civil the same thing I have for the mechanical I made the same exact thing it shows the pie chart and for the mechanical let's look at that we have the biggest sections would be mechanical design you can go down dynamics kinematics and vibrations going to be big mechanics and materials then we have to know fluid mechanics very well and thermodynamics so these are the top five i believe 
one, two, three, four, and yes, top four or, or stat and statics is gonna be big. So top five: statics, dynamics, and kinematics, and vibrations, mechanics and materials, fluids, thermodynamics, and mechanical design and analysis. That's your biggest sections. You should know these and spend a lot of time on these. And another note, if you did not take these classes in your university, some students actually take the FE exam before graduating, you can try to study on your own or just do that at the very end. So as you study, focus on that section at the end instead of worrying about learning that whole section or that whole class from scratch. So that's difficult if you have not taken the class before. So that's that and it, the same procedure here, the topics, the number of expected questions that you will be graded and it adds up to 100%. Then here topic check off list, you check off each topic that you went through, right? And same procedure. You just check these off. It's mainly a topic checkoff list. Same thing for the mechanical, civil. Then we have the general or other disciplines, FE exam. Same procedure for the other disciplines. So fluid mechanics is very important. It's going to be around 12% of the exam. Fluids. Then you have thermal and heat transfer. Then you have statics dynamics strength of materials all of these have equal weight so make sure you know these sections same procedure here shows the questions topic checkoff list check off all the topics that you went through so with a student we chose to do a breakdown in hours with a student i work with and you can do however you want to do it for the study time and based on their calendar this has to be adjusted and adapt it to their schedule, their daily schedule. That's that. And the last thing is environmental. So let me pull that up here. Environmental, same procedure, pie chart. What's important here is going to be the fluid mechanics. It's around 12% fluids and hydraulics. Then you have surface water resources and hydrology, groundwater, soil, and sediments. Wastewater is going to be very big. It's around 12%. And other than that, obviously environmental chemistry, fundamental principles you have to understand. This 4%, I believe, so it doesn't show in the pie chart. It's going to be energy and environment. It's around 4% of your exam. So make sure to look at these and study the most important ones. And make sure you do as many practice questions for that. Again, topic checkoff list for each topic relating to each section so this is all for free you can download it on my website and I think that's all let me know if you have questions and thank you